Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with Creating Digital Products. This module will be ebooks the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, when people think ebooks, the automatic default is Amazon, Kindle. Ebooks are way bigger than that. Way bigger. Now, we're going to talk about subject matter, and I'm going to tell you my story. My first ebook was a PDF. I bought some I bought some software because this was the 2009. And it was kind of crappy, but it turned your documents, Word documents, because at that point I was using Windows based systems into PDFs. I sold that thing, it was 1995, and I was getting up to about three, four hundred bucks a week with that. I didn't go from that PDF until I didn't get away from that PDF until like 2012. I made it better because a PDF is the file that you use to upload to CreateSpace. So I used the file that was going up to CreateSpace to sell on my blog, Urban Pack Rat. I, I will tell you, when the first weekend of Storage Wars, because Auction Hunters really didn't help me that much. It was kind of funny. It was Storage Wars that really did it. I woke up into my merchant account, and one night I had like 1800 bucks. I was like, what the heck happened? And at that point, I started uh, redoing the book because I was getting reviews. There were crappy reviews because the books had issues. But what I'm telling you is I had a $10,000 month with a PDF. So if you're sitting here going, I don't want to do ebooks because I got to do a Mobi file. We'll discuss that later. And I got to do an EPUB. Don't worry. Matter of fact, I actually recommend that you do your first ebook and have it in PDF file. Don't worry about Amazon. Don't worry about I. Because this is the thing. There are certain genres, and we'll discuss this as we get deeper into this, that just do better than others. If you're writing about howling werewolves that turn into big hokey men and they make the women swoon, okay, yeah, go to Amazon, find those groups, start participating. Because the thing is, a lot of the writers of those books that become bestsellers are very ardent fans of the genre. They know what they like and what they write is the stuff that they don't see in the genre that they feel would be good. So they already have you know, esoteric knowledge about that genre. But you can still break into it if you do your research. But do not get caught up into making this overcomplicated. And the way that this webinar is designed, I'm giving you my process. You will not see it anywhere else because a lot of people disagree with me. But I was one of the few writers, dropped out of college my junior year, Never took a writing course in my life. Was a voracious reader for a long, long time. That I was doing ten to fifteen thousand dollars from a PDF ebook, and I had writer friends with MFFs who were filing bankruptcy and struggling. It is how you position yourself in the channel. If you don't have any writing experience, don't worry about it. If you've never written a book before, don't worry about it. If you've never done any of this stuff, don't worry about it. And I can tell you as I sit here on the desk using an iMac with a lamp and with a microphone, all of this stuff I bought with my writing money. Well, the Macs are kind of flipped up, but everything else I bought with actually the first flip I bought with writing money. So even though I flipped these Macs, I still started with writing money. Uh, the BMW X5 that I drive. I bought that with that writing money. So don't even trip on that stuff. Don't even put in your heads that, oh, I, you have no clue to what you can do until you try. I never wrote a book before. The first year was kind of rocky because there was some editorial editing problems. I take ownership of that. It's true. Would I do it all over again? You damn skippy. Because... I learned so much those first two years, it was ridiculous. And that kind of goes back to a video that's going to go up tomorrow talking about uh, how to start a business with no money down in 2014. But just to give you some, you know, just to calm you down so you're like, oh, no, I never. No, no, there, there's so much opportunity out there with ebooks. Now, 
with the webinar and my webinars, I just I don't do a lot of slides because it gets hard to keep up with. And for those of you in Hustle University, you can listen to this over and over again or watch it because it will be available tomorrow. Subject matter. This is something that I learned in the resale business. Many people heard it before, and I'll say it again. When I was selling stuff and I would go downtown to the apparel mart, there was this sign, find out what people want, buy it, then sell it to them. It was just hanging there, and I just saw it. And one day, I just, and I saw this sign for years and years and years. One day, I just stopped and looked at it and was like, oh, <laughs> Ooh, and ah, and it, it was that moment, and I was just like, that's it. So I turned around, went back upstairs, bought some stuff that I knew that people wanted, and it sold like hotcakes. Same principle applies to writing. Going back to my writer friends, filing bankruptcy, struggling and shit, because they were trying to push writing down the throat of people that didn't want it. Now, there's two things that I write. And I write stuff that I research, that I know will sell and make me money. And I write stuff that makes me happy, which may not make me a dime, but I don't care. And this is the thing that you can parse as a writer. You don't have to write just one thing. I write business books. I write romance. Yes, I write romance. I write poetry. I'm working on children's stories. And there's a sci-fi thing I'm working on. But I'm taking my time with that. You don't have to lock yourself into, I have to be a romance writer, I have to be a business No, because see, this is the beautiful thing about the internet. You can go ahead and create a pen name, No, and some people link their pen names up. I choose not to because it's so different. I mean, I already know that people who are watching me on YouTube do not want to read about little girls getting their butt spanked. They don't want to read about that, but there's a big crowd for that. So I don't put them together. Because it would actually create a problem for me. But understand, subject matter, subject matter, genre, genre is more important than the writing. There are many people who say that Fifty Shades of Grey is not critically acclaimed writing. It, I haven't read it. It may or may not be. Don't really care. All I know is that book plugged in at the right time because this is the deal. When people got e-readers, they became more bold about what they read. You couldn't have Fifty Shades of Grey and be on the train and you know people are like, oh, she's reading Fifty Shades of Grey. That's a hot mama. People don't like that judgment. But with e-readers, I read most of my books on my phone when I'm waiting for something. Nobody knows what you're reading. So that came in and it just took up and it just set the marketplace on fire. But sex always will sell. Crime, violence, police procedures. There, there's, there's so many genres that you can write in. So pick your subject matter. Now, here's a tip for you people who want to write the book yourself. Write about what you know. The more stuff you do as a person, the more experience you have in life, the richer your writing will be. Or if you write a lot. That's another trick. My writing has grown so much. The little errors and stuff that I used to see, didn't see, or, you know, reusing the same words over and over again. I, I didn't see it because I was just like, I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm writing. Now I'm like, oh, and it's, it's starting to come. So once again, dropped out of school, junior or college, never took a writing course, made a full-time lucrative living as a writer. You can do it if you get the right subject matter. That's the most important thing. It's because... If you, you can market a crappy book and if you spend enough money, it'll sell. But, you know, it's, it's, it's like, is that a good thing? Because some people do it. And there are some people that if the book sells for 20 and they have to spend five bucks to acquire a lead and they net out at five, six, seven bucks profit, they're happy. I'm not real happy with that stuff. But that's a different webinar. Now, this is the thing that's going to scare the, the pants off of you. And every writer that I know that I talked about this two years was like, no. Dudes, do it. No. Write your book and let it sit on a shelf for a year, then go back and look at it and then love on it and then rub on it. No. Once you get your subject locked down, immediately start telling people about it. Immediately start building expectation. Unless you're going to pay for promotions, you can put a book out 
and it could be great. It could be in the right subject matter. It won't go anywhere. It will not go anywhere. A poorly written book, and I have proof of this in my uh, first books in the romance, they were okay. And I, I got one review that was very fair. It's like, not the worst thing I read, not the best thing. Okay, three stars. That was a valid assessment. And I took that and I was like, okay, let me make it better and put some more flourishes on it. Put, you know, um, cotton tails on the bunnies. And, you know, the reviews got better. So, what I'm telling you is if you're right in the right subject matter, you will get more sales than just writing something to please yourself. And I'm not saying don't write something to please yourself. What I'm saying is do both. Do what I do. Write stuff that you know will make money and also write stuff that will make your heart happy. I write poetry. I write like silly jokes. Uh, you know, if I'm dating someone, I write them love letters. All that stuff counts because it, it makes your mind geared toward the writing process. And the more you write, the more your mind will be geared, the easier it is to sit down and produce. So start marketing. Uh, marketing is going to be its own thing. You know, the, the, the way that I market, the things that I learned, it, it is too much. That's why there's going to be several courses about this because, and you know, and, and then I'll, I'll do resources because the simple matter is you can write a book, get it done and sell it and make money in 30 to 60 days depending on how big your book is if you write it yourself if you write it yourself i'm going to teach you a technique that can get your book written in three months i don't care if you've never written before and you know actually because i know someone's like what, what? i need that i got a project it's real simple and i'll just tell it but nope sorry uh, it's coming up make sure i don't jump ahead because i'm bad about that excuse me uh, covers. Now, this is the thing with covers. Never judge a book by its cover. Bullshit. Covers can be a huge inducement to get someone to buy your book, but it depends on where the book is. If you sell it on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, iTunes, you have to spend money on the proper cover. You have to. The reason that I got away with crappy covers was I did an, a lot of marketing on YouTube. You know, it's like, yeah, the cover then my marketing is what sold my books, not the covers. For other people, the covers will sell the book. So now this is the beautiful thing. If you're selling on your site, which means that you've pulled people in, you have did marketing, you can have a plain book with a plain cover and it'll sell. So, you know, when you're hearing all this stuff, because when you get with the writers groups and the writing people, most of these people have not been able to sell books outside of a platform. 95% of my sales have come from my website or Gumroad, not Amazon or Kindle. That's a very rare thing when you talk to other writers. People think that it's like almost alchemy turning lead to gold to be able to sell books on your own. No, it's not. It's a plan and it's a process. If And this is the thing with writing a book. Unless you're going to write in one of those super heavy populated genres, so you're going to write a specialty book about how to groom tulips. You are better off putting that book on your blog and networking with the other tulip people to get your book sold than slapping it on Amazon. You would slap it on Amazon and you'll put it on Barnes and Nobles and you'll put it on iTunes, but you would direct all of your marketing energy back to your blog. That's where you make the most money. And there's something that you'll get that um, you won't get from Barnes and Nobles. At Amazon, when you get people to your site, you get their email, which is super, super important. And that's going to be part of the marketing, because once you get that email, next time your book comes out, you just send out an email. Boom. You have sales. Now, <clears throat> some people will disagree with this. I don't do it because I love the writing process. You can hire someone out to write your book and you do not have to spend a thousand dollars. There are sites. Um, it would be someone in the Philippines or some other country. Excuse me. And you could just get a book written for 150, 200 bucks. I'm talking about 90,000 words. You go ahead and you tell them what, because this is the reason this works. <clears throat> the Philippines, um, middle class income, upper middle class income is 550 bucks per month. 750 bucks, you balling. So if you go to this person and who has to work on this book for a month and they have no job, they have no money, but they have an English degree. 
they'll write your book for 150, 200 bucks. That's a lot of money to them. And also, they're like, I'm working on some. They feel productive. So if you think you're pimping these people out, understand you're not. We as Americans have this crazy, crazy expectation that the rest of the world is just like us. Most of the people in the world are poor. Most of the people in the world don't have the things that our poor people have. Cars, TV. They don't have that. Space. They don't have that. So you can get a book written very, very cheaply. Now, write it yourself if you want to. But I'm just letting you know, for those of you out there who with a little scratch, a little coin in your pocket, if you got some ideas and you don't feel like writing a book, you don't have to. You can just give them the subject matter, give them the parameters, have them write it, and they'll do it very fast. Uh, now, the next thing, if you write yourself, let's talk about the big, big thing, editing. Editing can be, you know, depending upon the size of the book, 50 to if it's a real big book, 1500 bucks. Let's talk about the types of editing. There is proofreading, which is typically my big problem. It's not structure. It's not, no, I, I don't have a problem with that. It's uh, proofreading. That can be done for like 200 bucks. But uh, being a lifelong reader, uh, every book that I've read has had some issues. Every book. It is that hard to pull everything out. So this is what you can do. And this is poor man's editing. Find yourself three friends that like your work. Let me repeat. They must like your work. Have each one read it. Have the first one read it. Then when they find everything that's wrong, go ahead and correct that. Then give the book to the second person, find all that stuff that's wrong and correct that. And then the third person, they're not going to find as many. And you can do a really good job of catching most of the obvious stuff. This will not catch style like the Chicago manual. It will not catch all that stuff. But I want you to think about something. And this is something I discovered. And this is going to sound really, really horrible. My first book... There was a lot of people that had no problem with it. None. That's why I kept selling it. People were like, oh, no, you know, take it down, do this, this. And at one point, I did take it down, and I gave everybody that bought it a, a copy of the new book. And I bought some books back. But there were a lot of people that didn't have a problem with it. I had one guy who bought that first crappy book. And this is why I'm telling you, do not worry about making mistakes. He bought the book, and this guy was an investment banker. And he said... Yeah, there was some errors, but the, the, the content of the book was gold. It was awesome. This guy ended up paying me $5,000 to help him sell up his business. Yes, $5,000. That came from that crappy book. Do not believe this stuff that if you mess up or you put up. There's some people, well, you know, if an author puts this book out and there's typos, I'll never read them again. That person, that may be true. That's not everybody. I was blown away. And, you know, set him up and, you know, he wants... This is the thing. He set it up for his wife because he wanted her to have something to do. And she was always going to antique stores and everything. And uh, they have a nice little store in North Carolina. Very nice little store. I told him all the stuff that he was very happy. Um, and that came from that first book. So this, you know, this is other stuff that we'll talk, talk about. But writing a book is a business card that opens so many doors to you. It is ridiculous. But like I said, that's why there's so much stuff to talk about with ebooks because it's not about the book. Now, if you noticed, uh, writing a book was pretty far down the line. Writing a book is a process. Now, this is where I'm going to teach you how to write books, and it's going to blow your mind. 250 words a day times a year, that's 90,000 words. That's a big, thick book. Now, if you do 1,000 words a day, which, depending on my flow, I can do in an hour. If I'm best hour now, this was some stuff I was. This is when I was writing really hard every day, and I'm getting back into that. I did 1,800 words in an hour. When you write every day, your typos go down, your accuracy increases, your speed increases. So, if you write a thousand words a day, that's four books a year. That's a book every quarter. That's a that's plenty of books, because. If you're writing in romance, those people want stuff like every month. But if you're writing in the other genre, four books a year, five books a year, that's that's a lot of books. And you'll build up your inventory in two years. You'll have eight to ten books. And the reason the inventory is important, because the first book, say your first book's a hit, right? You sell that book, and they love you. They want you. They want to be, 
what are they going to buy next? That's why you need to, as soon as you finish your first book, and it's going through editing process, whatever, start on your second. Start on your third. You, you need to, because there's a path. Like my little crappy little books on Amazon under the pen name, there's 10 of them. No, that's eight. I killed two. Oh, shit, I've written 16 books. It, I mean, I'm, it, it's kind of weird because I'm doing different genres. But they'll buy the first one, they'll buy the second one, they'll buy the third. And that's where you make your money. And that's why a lot of people give their first book away for free. Uh, that's why I started with, um, you know, the um, Hustler's Mindset because, you know, that book was like 15 bucks. I just started giving it away because it's an introduction to me. And at this point, I just started that three weeks ago. I've given away 600 of those books. Now, everyone that's gotten that book, I have their email address. So in a year, I'm expecting to have, because it's starting to go down a little bit, <clears throat> I'm expecting to have five to 6,000 names on the email list. That is incredibly powerful. I've done very well with 600 to 800 solid names. So when I get to that level, I'll be able to print money. And I just told you something. That's part of marketing. You have to start an email list ASAP. The first day you start, you have to start collecting emails. You have to. Now, back to the writing the book. Become process driven, not muse driven. It was very, very beneficial for me to be a business person first and then a writer. Because if I tried to be a writer and I went through the romanticized version of being a writer, I wouldn't have made any money. Um, I have writer friends who... Four years later, are just starting to see what I was talking about four years ago. They're just like, oh, I see. Oh, because people do not care. Because in the writing community, if you write a book very fast, they call you a hack. There's this thought that you need to marinate on it. And I have some stuff I wrote 10 years ago. And I just kind of like gave it out to a few people. And I wrote this stuff extremely fast. And then I gave them some of my new stuff. And they were like, hmm. Couldn't tell the difference. Couldn't tell the difference. And this was more my romance stuff, my romance poetry. They couldn't tell the difference because I gave them romance stuff I wrote. You know, the poetry stuff I wrote today. They couldn't tell the difference. And that stuff was some, one of the best poems that people love. Pretty Brown Girl. 15 minutes years ago 15 minutes so don't get caught up in those you gotta do no 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 no. hustler mindset create a goal if you want to create a book to make money that's your goal not all that other stuff not winning wars not you know having all your writer friends go oh that's i love the way that you died it no 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 don't don't let that stuff go because if it is your goal to get to that point where your writer friends are going ooh and ah when you make the money and then you're able to support yourself from your creativity, you have more time to become a better writer. But if you do it the way most writers do it, they keep a daytime job, which sucks their creative energy out of them. They have less time to get good. So when you get to the point where you are able to support yourself from your writing, you have more time to be more creative, take any writing classes, write all day, sketch out scenes. You have more time to become good. And that's what I'm talking about with my writing friends that just kind of get it now. So there's a process. There's a book that I'm going to send out. It's called uh, 2000 to 10K. It's 2000 words to 10,000 words in a day. It's 99 cents. It's up on Amazon, and I recommend you get it because it's an awesome resource. And just that book, and what I'm telling you right here, you, yes, you, the one looking at the screen going, what, 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 Glendon? You'll be able to write a book in a quarter using this and the stuff in that book. Yes, you. And let's talk about what constitutes a book. A book's done when it's done. If you can get everything you need to do to give the person the information they need in 10,000 words, guess what? The book's done. If it takes you 20,000, then it's done. If it takes you 100,000, okay, at that point, it's done. So don't say, you know, because that was another thing that happened early. You know, people were putting up five-page books, and people were like, this ain't a book. This is 2,000 words. So 
uh, Amazon will will dock you. I think it's like seven thousand words you have to put up unless it's a children's book. So that's a really a short story. But a book gets done. Don't get caught up into the book has to be this long. Because when I put everything I thought needed to be in making money A to Z, it was like two hundred forty two pages. It was done. There's really nothing I can add to it. Now I can go back and add some other stuff. I'm I'm thinking about that. But I have other things, other bears to kill. But think of it as a process. Think of it daily and consistently if you write the book yourself. Now, this is where I was talking about in the beginning. PDF. You can make a great ebook, put it up in a nice, sweet, sexy PDF and sell that sucker. Because when you write... Now, these are books that are to solve problems. If you're going to do romance, all this other stuff... Now, Moby, that's a format. Is You have to put your book in Moby to upload it to Amazon. Or you can upload a Word document. But the Word document will get all janky when you uh, when people read it across various devices. EPUB. That's everybody else. Amazon has to be special. Uh, these are the formats that I've used. And I will tell you, I have backed down from Amazon. And I'll tell you why. I have a few older books up there that I don't really care about and the new stuff I'm keeping in house because I am the marketing machine and this is what happened when I put my storage auction books on Amazon and other people start writing. Whenever you go on Amazon and you buy a book, what do they show you? The person that bought this book or looked at this book looked at these other books. My book was freaking 50 bucks and all these other books were 2 to $10. I lost sales. Because I was leading people from Amazon to, I mean, from YouTube to Amazon, and they were buying other people's books, and I tracked it for two months. And when I took those links down and started focusing, that's why I'm telling you, this is a lesson I learned. Any heavy marketing that you do, push the marketing to your blog or your website. Because if you're writing a book that has competition, they may buy your book, they may not, but it was your marketing that got them there. So be very aware of that because when I stopped doing that, everybody's ranking. Because when your book is selling, Amazon gives you a numerical ranking. The lower your ranking, the better it is. The higher your ranking, the worse your sales are. Everyone's numbers dramatically increased. That's how I know for a fact that I was helping out other people. So understand, these are your formats and... PDF will get you pretty far. Even romance, because the thing is, when you write your book, you got to kind of put it out there. And this is something else. And I want you to really understand. Say you write a book right now, 2014, and it doesn't really do too much. Keep it. Your book may be awesome in 2017. That is the beauty of this, this stuff. Because I will tell you at the end why I'm doing this. Okay. Now I'm going to give you my long-term retirement plan. Currently, I have about 1500 bucks in passive income between book sales, YouTube, whatever. If I had 30 books out across various formats with YouTube, my passive income would be about 4500 bucks a month. If I, yeah, 30... Yeah, 30 books in the right genres, about 4,500 bucks a month without me doing anything. Now, if I have 60 books, and l let me just define this, children's books, romance books, business books, various sizes, I would probably be close to 10 grand a month passive income. Yes, from this. Now, this is so different than what I did with the storage auction business, and also... I will share with you some of the things that happened other than the bit. I had a lot of consulting opportunities Would have had the first storage auction show, a lot of business deals. And when I go in public, sometimes people recognize me. It's still a little weird, but the book just and one book will open doors for you. It will open doors for you. You will be amazed. OK, so it is. Oh, I'm getting good because, like I said, I wasn't going to keep you all here all night because there's going to be a lot of stuff with this. So. Trying to keep them to 30, 40 minutes. And we are right where we need to be. You can tell I'm excited. I like doing stuff right. Okay, this one's from Deb Williams. 
How do you research to write a book? I started one, but I didn't know it was so. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. I don't know when you put this question up. You don't research so much the book. You research the marketplace. There's two types of research. Say you're writing a book about your family history. You got to do research on that. You got to talk to old people. Go to uh, genealogy.com. The research I'm talking about is marketplace viability. If you notice, there's all these werewolf vampire shows that have been on for like the last 10 years. People are like, oh, there's another. The marketplace is there. The show would not be on if it wasn't supported by a marketplace. So let's say, you know, take some of your favorite hobbies. Say you like scuba, scuba diving. What you'll do is go on Amazon, see how many books about scuba diving. Then you go to you know, scuba diving communities. And you'll try to get a feel for the number of people that may be interested in your book. I didn't do marketplace research for my first storage auction book because I already knew the issues that people had and I didn't know these shows were coming on. That, that was the thing. My timing was impeccable. I beat the shows. I had 200 videos up on YouTube, my book out. I beat the shows by 14 months. I beat them by 14 months. So it wasn't a case where people were like, oh, he just started doing that because of the shows. No, people were like, oh, the shows are copying Glendon. And I know the storage auction business was good for someone with uh, limited education skills, limited skill sets, because virtually at, when I was in it, it was nothing for a person to come in, maybe six years, six months apprenticeship. They'd be making 30 to 80 grand a year if they really humping. That was incredible money for somebody just walking off the street. But your research is you got to figure out how big the marketplace is. That's the big thing. Hey, Glennon, this is Camilla. Would you recommend using a squeeze page to sell a book or have a full website? Ooh, I got an answer for you. What about no website and no squeeze page? I know, right? It's blowing your mind. I've actually tested that for almost a year. I sold most of my products and stuff without a web. Like the blog just came back. I got rid of Urban Pack Rap. I got rid of all that stuff. This is why Google is doing something. Like if you um, use Google advertising or some, they don't want you to have a squeeze page. They don't want you to have a squeeze page. They're getting real interested about that. It's like if you do marketing, you want them to go straight to a checkout page. Actually, proven by Amazon's research, it is better to do that. Because if you do your marketing right, it's like, okay, you go here, you're going to buy. So, yeah. Now, I would say get a blog. But don't worry about a blog because in the marketing section, we're going to talk about how you can market your book. And it, it, it kind of I stumbled upon it. I'm not going to tell you that I planned it <laughs> to be this way. But when my blog was sucking ass, I was like, I got to do something. So I started putting up YouTube videos and the YouTube channel got me way more traffic. I mean, and, you know, you're in the group and you saw that my YouTube channel has more hits than that that other website that I was talking about. And it's just me and that. That's the power of video. People wonder why I put up so many videos. YouTube is an ecosystem. The more videos you put up, the more they push you up and they put you in certain categories and they, they promote your videos and they feature your videos. If you put up a video like whenever you feel like it, you don't get that. So... You can do a blog to promote you, but once you get your book ready, you're going to need a YouTube channel, a podcast, or a Facebook group. That's going to get you way more uh, traffic and traction than a blog, because this is the thing with a blog or website. You build it, right? It's beautiful. You spend money. People don't know who you are. Without marketing, no one's going to find it or networking. Uh, let's see, Kathleen Brown. Could you talk about YouTube marketing for your book? For example, filming one recipe for a recipe book and linking them together with a strategy work or other ideas. Oh, this is what you do for your recipe book. You take a picture of the finished dish and you put it on Pinterest and link it back to your blog. Certain things, certain social media sites are better for certain things. Food is a very visual thing. You know, you making the food that's kind of cool. 
I wouldn't do a YouTube channel of making the food. I would do a blog, and once the food is done, these sexy pictures, make sure your background is really sexy and hot and crisp. That's what sells food. Because I actually helped someone do a recipe book, and that's what we did, and the results were really good. Yeah, the YouTube channel, you cooking, if you, now this is going to sound sexist, but it works. If you do a YouTube channel, make sure you get hot women making the food. I know it's ugly, and but I've seen the research because you get someone that's just regular looking and they're making food and they don't have that, that super bubbly personality. It doesn't go anywhere. But you could take some guy, girl or guy, same thing works for guys, who can be just dumb as brick that they'll watch. Oh, okay. You're answering my question. Yeah, Pinterest is going to be really for the recipes. That Pinterest is female driven. 85% of the stuff, maybe 9% of the stuff on Pinterest is female oriented. So recipes, fashion, all that stuff, anything that's pretty and sexy, Pinterest will get you a lot of traction to your YouTube channel and your blog. Hey G, could you how you often tell us about using data? Doing your homework to determine your assess. How do you do that with ebooks and do you use keywords, search engine tools ever to test for demand? Great question. This is kind of in the beginning, I did that for the storage for the Craigslist book after I wrote it. You know, not before. I'm doing something kind of different. Since I have the G verse, and I, I say it jokingly, but I'm very serious, I test a lot of stuff in the G verse. I make products for y'all because some of the stuff I know, like I think the 50 laws of hustling will do well once I get it done. But the newer stuff that's coming is specifically designed for people in Hustle University because I don't know if you've, you know, I'll tell the story very quickly. When I created Hustle University, I was um, borrowing from the theme of 300. That's why it was HMS 300. Because I did the math. If I could get 300 customers paying X amount of dollars, I was set. And that was the that was that was that was the premise and that was the thing. And then the Hustler Mindset Project, it grew up to be something totally different. So what I'm doing is creating stuff for you more so than the general public. Now for the romance books, that stuff I do. Because certain keywords will get you more pop for your book on Amazon is it's just have certain things have to be in there. So the keyword research and the thing that sucks is Google changed the keyword tool. Now it's the keyword planner and it's just, I hate it. I absolutely freaking hate it. But if you're going to do, I, just to give you some cheat codes real quick, how to is a serious keyword. Solve this. I mean, it really kind of just depends. Like if you are going to do, a book about starting a security agent agency how to start a security agency that's going to get you more traffic than all the sexy stuff because people look for stuff based on my and this is something else that will mess you up when you get into the keyword stuff a lot of times you have to misspell certain keywords because it is commonly misspelled like when i was doing because i'm testing out some youtube marketing and when i was looking at the keywords eBay is misspelled. It's like E-B-Y because that's how people are finding this stuff. Are they using really crazy terms? And it, it's just, it's very frustrating. It's very, very frustrating. But keyword research is very good to do. And if you're doing something like Tim Ferriss's book, the, the four hour work week, it was like the original title was How to Live Like a Drug Dealer, but this publisher wouldn't wouldn't go off on it. So he had to do, he spent 200 bucks on keyword research and that's how he came up with the name. So keyword research could be spending a little money and seeing how many people click on your ad. That will tell you a lot. Um, now my data that I use, I use a lot of YouTube data. I have an incredible amount of data that comes from YouTube and that drives a lot of my decisions because for me, YouTube is a remarkable resource that's free. You know, you get a lot of people that complain about YouTube, but the metrics they give me for free, all the stuff, it, I can't complain about them. I can't. It is one of the best things going. Now, you can 
pick another one of these uh, platforms to hammer, you can like do a podcast every day. Link it up with iTunes, and um, this is something else. Make sure that people can download your podcast from your website because most people do. It, iTunes is just pretty much a directory, but you could pick one of these platforms, Facebook, YouTube, or a podcasting and hammer it. And that's going to get you more views, more traffic for your stuff than anything else. Or you can spend a lot of money for pay-per-click advertising, or you can spend the time or hire someone to spend the time to do keyword research for you. Keyword research to me is a challenge because it keeps changing. Google keeps moving the cheese. And just when you think you figured it out, they do something else. And it is better from what I'm seeing to create quality content because since Google made some recent changes, people are finding a lot of my older videos, which lets me know that they've done something because people are commenting on stuff that I did in 2009, 2010. So they're finding that. I don't know how. You know, I would, well, actually, I, I would if I would take the time to go into uh, YouTube and look at the uh, an analytics. But what I'm learning is that pick something that you can just really push consistently for your marketing platform. Uh, there's a girl, her name's Shameless Maya. She started a YouTube channel, and the girl has a lot of skills. She got like 300 some thousand subscribers in a year. But she did a lot of networking. She reached out. She does music. So she did that in a year. But, you know, she does fashion and makeup and tutorials. That's a really hot topic. Now, I will tell you as we go with some of the marketing, I'm going to give you what I do. And I'm going to give you the stuff that other people do. Because there's two things. I don't follow a lot of conventional stuff because I have my own tribe. But if you don't have your own tribe, you've kind of got to follow some of that stuff. And one of the biggest things, and you, I hate it, I hate it, but giving something away for free. Um, it, it makes a huge difference. And, you know, it's something I struggle with. But going back to the data, I had to do it. Hopefully that answered your question. Now, there, there's going to be a lot of sessions of this. I'm not going to give you a number because I'm going to give you my stuff first and then I'm going to give you the best current stuff out there because, you know, once I get the resource directory together, I'll put that out for you because a lot of the books about writing ebooks on Amazon are crap. And it's not that the people didn't try. It's a lot of these people didn't know why they were successful and they thought they were giving you the keys to success when they really weren't. Because I bought a lot of them and I kept coming to that same premise. <laughs> Drinking from the fire holes. Okay, cool. So, like I said, uh, we're at 643. Like I said, I'm trying to keep these short. If uh, you want to view this again, it would be an HU tomorrow. And also, there's something going on with uh, my vidcaster site because people like can see videos, can't see it. So, I'm not going to do the transition when I know that stuff's going on. So everything is still being hustling you, and I'm just going to hold off on bringing a bunch of people in there into the group because I may go ahead and switch uh, the new people to YouTube because as soon as I hit 10,000 subscribers, I can do subscription channels on YouTube. So, and this is the thing. I don't know how many you can do. That is the beauty because other people like looked at that, and this is something I learned from a mastermind group. If I have the ability to do a channel, I can partner with someone and use their information to build that channel. So I'm going to see how many channels I can build. I don't know if there's a limit, but when we get there, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, uh, that looks like that's it. Uh, I will put out and hustle you when the next one's going to be. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of these. There's going to be a lot of these for this because, you know, I'm actually going to probably put audio books at the end. And I'll tell you my thoughts about that. Uh, how do you do a mastermind group? Uh, there's two that I'm a member of. One, not only there's four of us, <laughs> and the other one, there's six of us. Mastermind groups are better when they're small and everybody is really working hard. 
it, it's not like you want to have a mastermind group where you got four people own businesses and one person is a stay at home uh, dad or something. That, that's not going to work. Um, you want people. I've got actually I have three and there's only two of us in that one. And we just every time we sit around and talk about this stuff, ideals just bubble up. Uh, there's another one, Mix the Tree. You can go online. I think it's like 25 bucks a month. But essentially, you can create your own mastermind group with someone locally that you can connect with once a month, once a week, whatever you, you two want to do, and really discuss business. And they, they have to be on the same mindset with you of trying to make a lot of things happen with their business. Okay, well, that's that. I'm going to uh, shut this puppy down. And uh, thank you folks for coming out and sharing your evening with me. And I will see you on the good side.